everybody, it's Friday, uh, May 14th, 2010. The um, Stock Twits TV broadcast is all messed up, so I figured I'd do another one for you guys. Um, anyways, the S&P 500 did uh, close, obviously, down uh, $1.80, or I'm sorry, $2.10, or 1.8% today. Um, I was pointing out that uh, it was interesting that the market came down to almost a precise 38.2% retracement of the recent lows to the uh, highs that we had seen uh, just on Wednesday. And the market hit that 50-day moving average on Wednesday, and Thursday it hit it again. Today, obviously, we fell short of it, but uh, just to point again how you know the 50-day moving average is a lagging indicator. Down in the bottom left corner, you see on Wednesday, the 50-day moving average was set 117.53. Uh, yesterday, it went up to one. Uh, I'm sorry, 117.53. It went up to 117.60, and today it rallied another three pennies, even though the market was down two dollars. That's again because uh, you know the 50-day moving average takes in a lot of data, and it's replacing this day with a new day today. So on average, um, you know the 50 days, uh, the the closing price was up here at about 117.55, which is just short of the 108, 108, uh, 30, 108, 30, 108 50, uh support that was broken last week that really led to that cascade lower on the heavy volume today we had seen heavier volume as the market sold off again um, we uh, you know looking at the just the week itself this is the uh, volume weighted average price with the S&P 500 we can see that yesterday is when we broke down below the average price for the week so that basically said the sellers were in control for this week in spite of it being up several dollars again if we look at the five minute chart you can see that we had that big gap on Monday so even at this point the market was up sig pretty significantly for the week but the average participant was losing money there and obviously it just got worse on the open here today and uh, continued to sell off right up to the end of the day where on a one minute time frame you can see we did uh, get above uh, for just a you know, few minutes, but we closed above uh, today's uh, volume weighted average price. So a lot of damage still done to this market. We still look at that weekly time frame, and uh, you know, it's still possible that we could be setting up something similar to this, where maybe we turn sideways above that 200-day moving average, where we get a lot of people short. Uh, you know, longer term people short, and then we squeeze them higher. They puke, and then at the market makes a lower high and then lower lows, and then unravels. But that's still so far away that we really can't put much uh, um, analysis in that. So the important thing was we had broken some support at 115. We're now we're going to want to see that uh, level uh, potentially act as resistance. We'll also be looking at this uh, 114.50 level just above it as potential res resistance is, is that's the average price since the event. The event being the cascade lower, the flash crash as people call it. The NASDAQ also sim you know, similar here. We had seen increasing volume yesterday as it sold off and again today heavier volume as it continued to sell uh, a little bit further. This market came this week almost exactly up to the prior support which acted as a resistance at that declining 20-day moving average so um, you know backing it up to a daily time frame with more time frame on the S&P 500 as well it looks as though maybe we're going to consolidate or kind of you know ping pong around back between this 50 and the 200-day moving average the good news is that the there will be a lot of stocks setting up on their own merits they're still kind of not quite uh, settled in yet uh, to be good setups, but they can they can still settle in. I think the beginning of the next week and and maybe this market calms down a little bit. We get some better swing trade setups. Um, and the good news is we'll be able to be uh, find I think some some real good candidates on the long and short side in in all these markets. So back to the Nasdaq again. We've got these you know the 45 level as well. We've got the highs from January that were tested and held today. Uh, uh, that was not the case in the S&P 500. That is that we broke down through and closed below that, and that's obviously again at 115.10 levels. So just a lot of indecision in here. And um, my, you know, my theme has been the last uh, two weeks that you know since we broke below this 108.50 for the average participant, that you, you know the cash is a position. Any trades you're making should be half size positions. It's just a function of a riskier market environment. That's not the time to really press your bets. It's a time to be a little bit more conservative, but still obviously look to make money. The uh, Russell 2000 came almost precisely up to that $72 level 
uh, hit it 72.10 yesterday and backed off pretty ag aggressively. We can see that um, since the event, uh, that is since the cascade of last Thursday, and that's what I'm going to call it. I'm sick of flash crash. Uh, since the cascade lower, the average price, the Russell 2000 is relatively holding stronger as it remains above that. So that's important to recognize because the Russell has been the leader and continues to show that relative outperformance. For the week, though, it did break the volume weighted average price here. Uh, this morning and uh, stayed below it as well. The semiconductors are really an area where there's extreme uh, weakness uh, that this market had tried to get back up uh, into this range of prior support that twenty eight eighty to twenty nine dollar level that we were talking about it got into there briefly uh, backed off yesterday and then kind of uh, tumbled a little bit harder today if we take a look at you know we're, we're still obviously below the January highs if we look at the Fibonacci you can see where is the uh, S&P has uh, retraced 38.2 percent the uh, semiconductors have come down almost 61.8 percent so much weaker on a relative basis and that's not a good thing it's not a good thing that the financials are, are uh, showing uh, relative weakness either either as they had basically dropped uh, from this prior support level at uh, you know, in the in the 16 area, that they had broken from that support level uh, down about two thirds of, uh, of that retracement of the lows to the highs as well. So um, there's weakness on heavy volume in the financials and the semiconductors. That's not the type of uh, you know leadership uh, you want to see. Uh, that is, you know. To the downside, when these guys are going lower, they typically drag the rest of the market. We'll look next week probably for a test of that 200-day moving average again. And and that 200-day moving average is coming up at a pretty uh, rapid uh, rate as well, um, right now at about $15 a share. The stocks that we had been uh, involved in, we were stopped out of uh, the IGT, as I'd mentioned. Uh, if you had gotten short the uh, STP, um, that, uh, you know, if you're in this one, I would say your stop goes maybe about 1073 or so. I will have another weekend for subscribers over the weekend, and that will outline some stocks uh, for trading on Monday. Have a great weekend, everybody.